is well, she's just a household name. She's a spiritual teacher, she's a psychic, she's a best-selling author, and she's a very well-known TV personality as well. And we're talking about Sylvia Brown, and we are happy to say that we have her live in our studio with us today. And we're talking about her new memoir, Psychic, My Life in Two Worlds. Thank you so much for being with us. Oh, I know we sort of so bombarded nice. you in no. the makeup room. <laughs> no. No, <laughs> yes, she's already ha given a couple readings this morning, impromptu. Which, you know, I kind of would love to start there. It, when did you realize that you had this gift of Well, being... see, I come from 300 years of them, psychics. Mm -hmm. I mean, actual working psychics. But I, I don't remember at three. They told me at three I started showing it. But at five I knew because I actually looked across the table and saw my great-grandmothers and I and I saw their faces run and I just freaked and I ran out the door my grandmother was also at that time a working psychic in Kansas City Missouri so my dad took me to my grandmother and she said oh please don't feel bad they're gonna go to God's house and sure enough in two weeks they were dead Wow Wow and that was at five uh, that was a great way to be introduced to it yeah did it sort of I mean, for a lack of better terms, <clears throat> freak you out? I mean, how long did it take for well, you to realize this was ongoing? Well, I was the ongoing? only one out of 300 years of psychics that actually put myself through uh, testing by psychologists and psychiatrists. And my grandmother said, why are you doing that? And I said, well, because we could have been 300 years of schizophrenics. Who knows? Right. And it came back. Sylvia's absolutely normal, but she has something paranormal that we don't understand, which they didn't, and they still don't. I want to talk about your book. People know about, you know, just the different readings that you offer and how you are able to uh, tell them about their life. Tell them about their life and, and, and the, their loved ones. But in your book, what what do you delve into? Everything that's happened to me in my life. You know, my marriages that flunked or my bankruptcy and all the things that I've had to go through. And so many people have said, why now? Well, at 74, you figure, oh, see, when I... I thought about it earlier. Everybody was alive, so you can't always. Oh, so you wanted to wait until they were gone yeah. before you talked about them. <laughs> and I thought I wanted people to know that, in other words, sort of in quotes, if you lose your purse, I'll find it. But if I lose mine, it's gone. In other words, it's not for me. You never hear of a surgeon operating on themselves. You know. So you cannot you cannot detect um, anything nothing. or nothing. anything with nothing. your own. Nothing. Nothing. Is that pretty common with psych psychics? Absolutely. My okay. son's the same way. He's a working psychic now back in San Jose. Thank God he holds up the, you know, because I have three foundations. And uh, he can't tell anything about himself. No. Does he, do you ask things about him? And, or no, we, did, we're too close. Right. That's why with Montel, because I've been with Montel 20 years, the longer you're with a person, the closer you get to a person, the less effective you are because hmm. you're emotionally involved. Hmm. Were you able to tell him about the, uh, some of the health issues and challenges? Oh, I told him five years before that he had MS and he didn't believe me. Hmm. And he went everywhere. And finally he went to... Uh, Mayos, and they said, you have MS. Wow. Did he ever come back to you and say oh, you were sure. right? Oh, sure. Sure he did. Mm -hmm. And um, he tells everybody that. I, I want to talk about the spirit guide that you talk about, Francine. Francine. When, when did you realize that you had a, a spirit guide? I was guide? seven, and I heard this voice, and she said, you don't have anything to be afraid of. I came from, I come from God. And I thought, yeah, right. And I went screaming down the steps to my grandmother. Right. And um, in those days, we had victory gardens. And I said, oh, Grandma, I heard this voice. She said, oh, pull up the carrot. We all have them. <laughs> so that was the end of that. Do you well, just call for her, or does she just she's appear? She's always, a, just like your guides are always We We all have guides. Everybody has a guide that stands to the right of them. Huh. You talked about... Um, you oh, you just let that go right by. That we have a guide? I'm sorry. Right. I, I'm like, really? Where? where, where? <laughs> well, where because, it begs, because it begs the next topic. Some people believe that their guide is God, but you also used guide and God kind of in the same kind of expression. Well, sure, because so God you, you sends a messenger two? to you. Okay. You know, but I say if you're in bad straits, always pray to God, but you've also got a nudging spirit along the way. And would that be different from what people would believe as like the Holy Spirit that comes from God? Is that a, no, like an angel type? No, it's a person or? you've made a contract with on the other side. So your whole life is a contract Okay. to learn for God. But it's like having a partner there that kind of nudges you. I love what uh, um, Gene Dixon said. They're nudging spirits along the way. Okay. Now, how do you identify and utilize as Andy wants to who you know how do you tap into that to that spirit 
what I tell people to do, because I have a book out about that, is go mentally go to a place in your mind, like a seashore or whatever, and put your back against a palm tree, and then ask um, your guide to come out of the shadows. See, your guide is named Isaac. Okay. It's a male. It's a male. Okay. And, and your guide is Cassandra. It's a female. Hmm. So pretty soon, if you keep doing that, you're like in a meditative state. And I always like to tell people, like the Aborigines do, set your alarm for 15 minutes early. And then in the morning, you know, take your, I don't care if it's mountains, but take yourself to the same place every time. Mm -hmm. and then ask your guide to come out of the shadows. And pretty soon, I swear to you, you, you start getting a vision. You're working well, on another book, too, right now? Yes, it's The Life of Judas. And um, that will be out and available for, for everybody to pick well, up? Well, the, the book that I just got through will be out at the end of the year, and that's about what celebrities are doing on the other side. Wow. Well, and you have Psychic out right now. You're going to be at the Changing Hands bookstore. You're going to be signing autographs. Tomorrow night, you're going to be at the Celebrity Theater, um, and people can ask questions, and you'll be giving oh, a yeah, lecture. Oh, yeah, I can get to, through two, three hundred people. Oh, I'm you sure must you're be gonna exhausted at the that. end of the night, <laughs> Sylvia. No? No, because I, you see, that's me. I was born this way. Uh -huh. I guess, if you want to call it normal, what is normal? But I guess if one day I'd been normal and then I got this, maybe it would be. But you see, don't know I don't, any other I don't, way. I, no, I don't yeah. know any other way. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, thank you very, very much. I'm, I was so excited Cassandra. to see her. So you, Cassandra. Now you know. Cassandra. And what was yours? Isaac. Uh, Isaac. Isaac. Okay, great. We'll try it. I'll sit in front of a palm tree. Um, you can call the number on your screen at 602 267 1600 if you would like to go to the Celebrity Theater tomorrow night, 8 o'clock. I'm sure there's going to be standing uh, room only. Packed house, no doubt. Absolutely. Well, let's talk a little bit.